Welcome back and today we're going to try and restore this auto harp. So this one's got a lot more detail than the other one we've looked at. And it looks a little older and a little well made, though it does have one big issue. At the back it started to come away. Due to the tension of the strings over many years, I'm guessing the glue has dried up and it's no longer been able to resist that string force. So the first thing we're going to do is use a tuning key to relieve all that tension so we can try and glue this back together. Now I did struggle to find a key but after a few days I got this in the post and this is a number 9 key. It seems to fit on quite well but it exploded after not much use. But thankfully I also ordered a number 10 key and this one seems to work really well. It's not ideal as it would be better to have a bit more leverage so we can fine tune but it does work. I've loosened all the strings as we can see and then I'm going to use a weight to kind of press the instrument into the shape that it needs to be and hold it there for a while. So we're not going to glue it instantly. My plan is to kind of let it see how it will sit once we put some force on it. So I'm just going to pile a load of books and magazines on this and then slowly we're going to see it crush down and we'll get an idea of how it will repair. Because my concern is that this may not actually go back perfectly and there's going to be a little bit of error and I guess there's always going to be that but how much of that is going to exist and is it going to be an issue so so these are all the books that we've put on it and after like 24 hours we can see that there is almost no gap and just a little bit of extra force we can see that we can close that up so this gives me confidence that we can glue this now you can see the backboard is a little bit shorter than the end of the instrument, which isn't ideal. So when I clamp this, I'm going to try and bear that in mind and try and clamp it long ways as well as across the thickness. But yeah, once the weight's removed, it still opens up. So now we're in the shed. I'm going to fill this with as much glue as I dare and then and clamp it together and then start to let the glue do its thing. We'll wipe off the excess and hopefully this is going to be strong enough to resist all of that string tension. If not, then I'm not sure what we're going to have to do. We might have to come up with some kind of metal brace system, which would be pretty ugly. Ideally, the glue will hold. So as you can see, I've spread the glue around and there's plenty in there. And I'm going to give this quite a while to dry out and set and cure before putting any tension on. But I'm just going to clamp it together. I've got these squeeze clamps. And I'm just going to keep a careful eye on all of the gaps just to make sure that they do close up. So we can see the glue started to squeeze out the sides. This is a really good sign. I'm just going to spread that about on my finger, get rid of the excess. And yeah, it's starting to look good. I'm going to apply a clamp along ways to try and keep that end part in line with the backboard. But this is just to kind of correct that as much as it can. Don't expect a lot from this clamp. So I've left this a couple of days and let's see how this holds together once we remove the clamps. So far it's so good, it's not opening up. We do have a little bit of excess glue on there but that'll pick off quite easy. And I think with an instrument like this, you're never going to get it to look brand new. And as we restore it, that's not going to be the goal. We're just going to clean this up enough that it's playable and usable. But yeah, that seems to have glued up really well. So next we're going to look at and see how these different tuning things work. And we're also going to clean up this, uh, this sign. I've discovered as you rub it, it kind of becomes shiny and gold-like. So I'm guessing this is some type of gold leaf. So I want to carefully bring back that shine without overdoing it. So next we're going to look at how this actually works. So we remove the lid and we can see we've got these different combs. I've had a chance to kind of give this a rough tuning. It'll need a little bit of refinement in the future, but it does hold the tune and it does seem to work, which is really good. So this is the combs. This is the first one. And this appears to be a D chord. Next we've got an A7 chord, next is a G7, and then next we've got a B minor, and then we've got an A minor, and then we've got an E minor, a G, a D7, and then a C. And now these chords should work together quite well, but some of them are kind of duplicated and I don't think it sounds great when I play it. So I'm tempted to kind of come up with my own comb configurations and the combs in there aren't in the best shape. 
they do need a refelt. So I guess for now I'm going to pause the video here and start to think about what these notes should actually be. We do have some labels on here and these don't match the actual combs that are in those positions. So I'm not sure how correct it is. But yeah, that, that's it for this time. I'm going to go away and come up with my own chords for each of the actual taps and think about what I'd like to kind of create songs with.